Tourism Day. It's observed under the theme, one billion tourists, one billion opportunities, and how true it is. According to the United Nations World Tourism Organization, tourism has become one of the biggest players in international commerce and represents at the same time one of the main income sources for all developing countries, and we know how valuable this is. Well, joining us now to talk a little bit more about tourism, its effect on any country, and how South Africa is performing on a global scale, we're joined by the man himself, the Tourism Minister, Derek Hanekel. Minister, always good to have you and welcome to our set. Isn't it beautiful? It is fantastic. Morning, Leanne. I haven't seen you since uh, Kilimanjaro, by the way. Yes, I know, I know, I know. And, and you promised me we're going to do an adventure here of the same capacity, perhaps not that altitude, but here in South Africa. Yeah, promises, promises. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's just do it. I agree with you. So it's World Tourism Day that's coming up shortly and uh, tourism has been stealing headlines uh, of late. But talk to us about how South Africa is doing and what a day like this means to us. Well, I mean, a day like this, just, just coming alongside the uh, World our National Heritage Day is just fantastic because that's what tourism is. It showcases everything that South Africa is about. And we're encouraging people to travel, to travel not only to see things, but to experience things. And that's, that's a difference. When you're standing here, you're hearing things, you're smelling things, you're feeling it. You're not just seeing it. And that's what we're trying to do is to promote domestic tourism. But tourism, uh, Leanne, as, as you know, I mean, it's been doing very, very well for a, a long time, for decades, in fact. But we, we have had setbacks, uh, starting off with the Ebola outbreak and then other factors that have negatively affected tourism. But we'll get out of it. We're very confident that we will get out of it. Yeah. We certainly will. But I mean, we find ourselves personally, I mean, you talk about Ebola. This was a continental thing here in, South, in, 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 in yeah. Africa. But moving to South Africa and we look at issues of these unabridged birth certificates where you yourself have, had, have admitted that it is severely impacting our tourism figures, particularly when it comes to families traveling here to South Africa. Yes, it is. It is affecting family travel. And that's why we're having this discussion. The deputy president is convening us, a team of ministers, in particular the Minister of Tourism, myself, and the uh, Minister of Home Affairs, to look at whether we can uh, make some adjustments to the visa regime and to some of the requirements that are actually quite, quite onerous. And so that's the discussion. I don't really want to preempt the discussion because we, we really are exploring ways of getting out of this difficulty, if you like. Yeah. But the reality is it is hampering people coming and visiting South Africa. I mean, for instance, uh, there's a story where Bill Gates was here in South Africa. Um, I think he was coming to Sabi Park and he had his daughter with him, but because she didn't have an unabridged birth certificate or he didn't have it, well, they were turned away and he had to fly back home. Now, I mean, it's stories like this that... that potentially are going to damage us really, really badly. And the income from tourism is major. I mean, are these examples that you are putting forward and saying, guys, let's rethink this. This is perhaps not the right route we can take. I think that that's it. I didn't know the Bill Gates story. And I think that's it. But it's stories like this that make us stand up and say, well, is, is, this, is this the right thing we're doing? Because, of course, I've heard lots and lots of stories of people being turned away because there's a document missing. Airlines have uh, registered their, the, the, the difficulties they're experiencing. And that's why we're looking at it very carefully. Because I, I have to say this, Leanne, because it's important to say that the intent was good. Mm. We want to combat choice. child trafficking. Of course we want to. But it, it is also true that no other country in the world requires the physical carrying of these documents. And there lies the difficulty. You may just forget one document. You may have flown from one part of the USA to up to New York for your flight, only to discover that there's one document missing. You can't get on the plane. Yeah. So there lies some of the difficulties. But I, I believe that the discussions are happening in good faith and that we will seriously explore different ways of doing things so that we can still do our bit to combat child trafficking, but without these negative effects on our tourism, which, which we need so desperately, yeah. especially now, low commodity prices, slowdown, economic slowdown, China's in trouble, not in trouble, but, but relatively speaking so. So our exports are facing difficulties. Tourism remains a big export because that's what it is. People come here and spend foreign exchange. So we have to do everything within our power to make sure that we, we capitalize on this huge asset that we've got. Here it is. Yeah. This is what we have to sell. It won't go away. Mm -hmm. It's not affected by commodity prices, but we have to do everything to ensure that we, we, we remove obstacles. 
uh, that we showcase what we have. We make it a wonderful experience for tourists and make it as easy as possible yeah. for people to travel to yeah. South Africa. Well, and certainly because, I mean, when you've got, unfortunately, our currency looking at levels like this, we should be having such increased tourism we for should. people taking advantage. But as you say, there are discussions that are taking place. This is World Tourism Day that we are celebrating, that we are talking about. And, you know, we're looking at the world and, I mean, we are such an amazing leading example for the rest of, 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 of continents looking at how we manage to manage Manage this particular park that crosses over three countries and I mean this has to be one of our pride and joys. Oh, oh definitely I mean we're doing really well on conservation obviously we have a rhino poaching problem here we're, we're doing our utmost to combat it but our conservation story in South Africa is is a success story it's a wonderful story the but if, if you look at the the reasons for people coming to South Africa um, they come for a host of reasons. It's no longer only safari and beaches and Table Mountain, but these remain our key, our really, really important assets. Of course, we have our World Heritage Sites and other things, our World uh, uh, Robben Island, and now here in this province, Mapungubwe, and the uh, Cradle of Humankind has just risen to prominence because of the recent discoveries. We have all of that. But, but at the end of the day, wildlife is something that Africa offers to the world yeah. that no other continent can offer in the same way. Yeah. So it's precious to us. Kruger National Park almost symbolizes, although we have hundreds of smaller uh, conservation areas, privately owned uh, nature reserves and parks, game parks, uh, Kruger National Park is symbolically so important to us. Yeah, and this is a jewel. It is one it of is. our, it's our absolute pride and joy. And I know that you did a tour of Limpopo in the, over the last few days, just looking at tour operators. This is the host province of World Tourism Day, which I'm sure they're exceptionally happy about. So I've got a wrap, but I mean, what were the biggest findings? Just very quickly, what did you find in, in Limpopo? Well, as we found in other provinces, once you get out to a province like you discovered Hootspreit, we've discovered lots of little, what we call hidden, beautiful hidden gems. There are parts of this province that people just don't know about. So these undiscovered areas. Um, but I must say, uh, probably what stands out for me more than any other place in the province is Mapungubwe. Yes. Because it is one of our World Heritage, Heritage Sites. It's unique. It's different. It distinguishes us because it tells the story of people who lived in South Africa a long time ago. And the same as the Cradle hum of Humankind tells the story of our early ancestors. So this, this province actually has a lot to offer. We spent the night in Sanin last night. Oh, wow. It is a beautiful area, unbelievably beautiful. Amazing. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, perhaps an underrated province. You said correctly, for domestic tourism, it's getting the numbers. Yeah. But we need to put it on the map internationally. People must say, well, when we go to the Kruger National Park, you, we might enter through Mpumalanga and come out into Limpopo and go through Limpopo when we go back to Johannesburg Indeed. because there is so much to see here. Lastly, Leanne, I know you're under time pressure, <laughs> but one of, the, one of the really good selling points for Limpopo is the cultural diversity that you have here. Yes. We can hear it in the background. Indeed. Those are not lions roaring, those no. are people singing. And indeed, and I, and I couldn't think of a better way to end this interview with these visuals that are on our screen right now. Minister, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the celebrations of World Tourism Day. Let's take a break. More after this. Stay tuned.